What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and today in the world of indie gaming we're checking out King Under the Mountain. A game that's basically RimWorld with dwarves, alright? That's all you really need to know about that. If you took dwarves and you mixed them with RimWorld and you're building like a mountain hold, that would be this game. This game was actively kickstarted about a year ago. We checked in on it then with one of the first alphas that they put out. But it's had a few updates over the last year or so. It's had six or seven updates. And so I figured we should check the game on out and see if it's changed at all. This was a game whose aesthetic I actually really liked artistically inside the game. Like the way that they managed to make things pop always made me happy. So here's our little dwarves. As of right now, we have Toril Rock Fungus. We've got Haskell Goldenhold, who is a farmer. We've got Car Golden Armor, who is apparently a dwarven chef. Okay. We have Un Umberhead, a dwarven woodcutter. We have Ragon Hilled White Jewel, who is apparently a dwarven blacksmith. We've got Dusty Diamond Metal, who is a carpenter. And then we've got Nana Two Beard, who I've decided is my favorite because that name is awesome. Good old Nana Two Beard. Everybody loves Nana Two Beard. Who doesn't love Nana Two Beard? Is that a tree right there? That's a bush. Can I get wood out of a bush? I guess there are people in the world right now that can get wood from just about anything. Can I chop these bushes? So bushes don't chop. I could probably, oh, there's trees down here. All right, well, let's get some of those trees knocked down down there. We'll get that started out. And then if I could clear out some of these bushes right here, that'd be great. I don't know if these people will like dual wield their professions and go do like random menial labor if there's nothing else to do. I kind of hope that they will. We can mine, so let's get started mining. I want to make myself like a big hold back up in here. There we go. That looks good. We'll have a little three-tile entrance to our dwarven hold. It looks like they are actively getting rid of bushes right now. That's good. I'm going to put farmland out here. So, like, bushes being in the way is inconvenient for me. Yeah, look at you over here mining away, looking all cool with your helmet that's got, like, a feather in it. You knock those walls out. You do it. What's your name? Toril Rock Fungus. That's right. You fungally rock that wall. I believe... Where are they going? Oh, they're drinking water. Oh, so the water is kind of far away. Okay, so we'll have to figure out some kind of water receptacle as time goes along. Dude, I love the lighting effects in this game. When I first played the alpha, those lighting effects right there around your cursor and, like, the way that the rock is, like, 3D, almost like, if you take a look, it's almost like they've got it on different layers. So it's almost like the bush is on a layer that's on top of the background layer, and that really, with the lighting, makes it seem like it pops off and becomes 3D. Like, I love that effect, and I don't know how they pulled that off, but it looks great. Like, it really makes the game stand out, like, big time. Alright, so with our mini-map here, oh, I killed the mini-map. I have effectively murdered my mini-map. I didn't mean to. How many logs did we get out of those? We got oaken logs down there. Okay, that's fine. We got oaken logs around. Continue clearing out bushes down here, if you would, please. I would like for you to continue just clearing bushes. Yeah. That's going to be our main job, is just landscaping for right now. Because nobody's going to respect a dwarvish hold that has a whole bunch of, like, errant ficuses running around just blocking off the scenery and making it look terrible, okay? So, like, we need to make sure that the ficuses have been slain. Now we can build stuff. We got walls. We got doors. We got furniture. We can make a lantern out of various stuff. We can make pillars. That's pretty cool. Interesting. I kind of want to have pillars, but I guess pillars are just a support structure. I thought they were going to make our place look more fancy. Looks like we can make bridges. We can make doors over here. We can make walls on this side. I'm going to leave this open for right now because I don't see a reason to fiddle with it. Let's go back and I'm going to queue up some more mining just to make sure that we have, like, rooms ready to go as we get further back into the dwarvish hold. We'll put that right there and we'll put, like, a little, I don't know, like a little 5v5 right there. Yeah, it looks good. A little 5x5 five five right there. Do the same thing on this side for, like, everything that we might need. Keep things symmetrical because if there's one thing I know about dwarves with all of their knot works and whatnot in their art, it's that dwarves have a rampant appreciation for symmetry. So, symmetrical it shall be. Let it be so in the lands of man. Can we harvest anything out here? What is that, an anvil? Okay. And we should probably figure out some kind of farming or something. We can make zones. Yeah, let's have a look at these zones. So we've got stockpiles, a feasting hall, we've got earthworks. What does earthworks do? 
We've got charcoal clamps. We've got lanterns. We got. I don't know what earthworks is. I, I legitimately have no clue. Uh, we can have mushroom farms. Maybe we should do a mushroom farm. Yeah, make a mushroom farm over here. Yeah, do like two mushroom farms. And we'll just kind of see what happens with those. We've got a graveyard. We've got masonry workshops. There's farm plots over here. Okay, yeah, add another farm plot. Why not? I don't know if we're going to have room for all this stuff. But, actually, we can get rid of this one right here. We'll get rid of the mushroom farm. I'm kind of wondering if the mushroom farm needs to be underground. Like, one thing I know about funguses, fungi, is that they are fun. Believe me. They wouldn't have fun in their name if they weren't. But one thing I know about them is that they don't like sunlight. So, like, where I live, it's overcast a lot of the time because we're next to the ocean. And like in the winter time, mushrooms the size of a frisbee will grow in a period of like two days. But the second the sun comes out, it's like you can almost watch them burn up. Like they start to get like the equivalent of I guess is what a sun like a sunburn almost to a human being, and they just like burn to a crisp and die. Like it's kind of crazy. Good old mycology, mycology, your ecology, our ecology. There you go, farmer. Do your thing. That's what I'm talking about. Do we decide leave fallow? Let's go with potatoes for now. Potatoes sound good. We can do potatoes. You guys help out. Exactly. It's a communal effort. Nice job. Dwarves are good at helping and sharing and friendship. Unless you're not their friends. And then they're good at screaming and shouting and bludgeoning. But we are friends of the dwarves right now. So I think it's going to be okay. Now, we haven't even started planting over here. So that might take a little bit more time. I think even the characters are layered. Like it looks like the mustache and the beard and the eyebrows are a layer higher than the face. And the face is a layer higher than the body. I like that, man. It just makes it pop off the screen. It makes it look really, really good. Like that aesthetic is very unique. And I'm glad that they chose to chase it down because I think it's a good thing. Now, we'll chop down some more trees down here. I don't want the lumberjack sitting around doing nothing all day, so might as well give them a little bit of work to be done. I'll probably start moving back a stockpile pretty soon. So what I'll do is I'll put this back here, and then we'll just connect it with like a big room, and we'll call that a stockpile right there. I don't think it's going to be done for a little while, but when it does get done, what is that right there? Hematite ore? So that's iron. Okay. Hematite is an iron-bearing stone, I guess. In case you were wondering, an iron-bearing rock, I guess. Although hematite's a mineral, as I recall, I think. Yeah, hematite's a mineral, I believe. So anyways, the difference between a mineral and a rock is that a mineral is essentially chemically stable in the same every single time, whereas an aggregate of minerals would be a rock, in case you were wondering what the specific definition is of a rock versus a mineral. In case you were wondering... So a mineral is just an isolated chemical state. So like hematite is probably like just iron oxide would be my guess. It's probably like Fe2O3 or something like that would be my guess. If I had to throw something out there, because I think iron is uh, 3 positive and O is 2 negative. I don't recall though. It's been a long time since college. It's been a long time and you want that to be chemically balanced. Chemicals, they seek atoms seek to be stable like that and like basically make sure that they've got a balanced charge otherwise they start shedding and having issues and they start bonding with other stuff although it's possible it's entirely po I mean you're more likely to see with a rock though so like if you end up with like a hematite that's like missing an oxygen or something off of it right so it's like Fe2O2 that just means it's got like a positive charge that means that something that's got a negative charge is going to attract it, and it's going to come together, and it's going to become a rock. It's going to aggregate. So anyways, yay geology. Yay chemistry and all that fun stuff. I'm sure there's a chemist in the audience that will more than likely correct me who does this for a living every single day. See, my problem is that I have my degree in geology, but I haven't practiced geology in like eight years. So... Because I play so many games on a weekly basis and I'm constantly parsing for information, I have limited brain space for all the stuff that I'm looking for as an indie impressions guy. And so, like, I tend to brain dump information pretty aggressively. Tends to happen. I've got a feeling that mushroom farms need to be underground. Is everybody just idle right now? What's everybody doing at the moment? Like, what are you guys up to? Like, what is taking place right now? Also, I'd like to see what's in our resources. So, in our resources, we have seeds, tomato, we have carrot, 
We have corn. Oh, really? They're not going to plant that. Okay, well, I guess we'll plant corn up here then. We'll get a little bit of the old... Let's do that. There we go. We'll throw some maize in there. It'll be all right. Uh, we're starting to get this little area done, which is nice. We'll start designating this as various zones where we can put things in just a minute. But for now, I think it's a better idea just to hang tight. Miner, I would like you to take this back a little bit further. And then we will have like a, maybe like a secondary area over here. Like a secondary path that kind of cuts down into the south. And then we'll give that a second door right there. We'll give that a second door right there. We'll do the same thing up this way. So that the thoroughfare is filled out. There we go. So we'll connect that right there. And then we'll connect that right there. And we've got like a nice little base going right now. Pretty soon this should look pretty good, I think. Should look pretty rad. Uh, new things that I've seen so far since the alpha that I played back when the Kickstarter released. Farming wasn't a thing, and there's a whole bunch of new buildings and zones in here. So when I played, there was a metalworks and there was a carpentry shop, and that was pretty much it. Now it looks like there's a kitchen. Well, there's a masonry too. Now it looks like there's a kitchen. It looks like there's an earthworks, farming plots, feasting halls, mushroom farms. So they've added in a couple of new things over the last year. A few new mechanics. Uh, one thing that has not changed is the sheer amount of bulk stone you end up with. It's just laying around as you mine out areas. Uh, we should probably start putting in little dormitories too. Places for people to live. I don't know how big bedrooms should be. But I've got a feeling that sleeping on the ground is not going to be something they're going to want to do long term. And so we'll start putting in little 3x3s three over here. That are just sort of connected like so. Oh, it doesn't fit. we got to scoot this up by one if we want it to work like that. Alright, well we can go with remove orders up here. So if we take that from right there. I guess we could do it this way. We could just have a little hallway that runs over here. Yeah, that seems amicable. I'll do it. That sounds all right. We'll put in a little bit of that right there. We'll put in a little bit of that right there. I love designing my base like at the beginning of any type of like RimWorld playthrough or Oxygen Not Included or any of these types of games. Like I really, really enjoy setting up my base at the beginning and like gridding everything out and making it look all cool. It reminds me of designing dungeons in D&D and it makes me happy. So there's our corn plant right there. Our farmer is doing what our farmer does. Is that all of the corn seed, or do we not have any left? We have 12 left. Okay, so he'll be able to plant a little bit more, but not a lot. I probably overdid it with that plot right there, but I was thinking, like, in terms of realism, like, in real life, like, farms go on, like, as far as the eye can see, and so I just made it big because I assumed they would want it big. You know, I don't do anything small. I do it big, y'all. I do it big. I would like to put in floors... I'm thinking maybe there's no flooring option for right now, but I would like to put in floors. What is this right here? That's just hematite and a different bearing. Okay. It's just hematite and a different bearing stone. What is this? Granite. Okay, makes sense. And what is that? Sandstone? Ew! Disgusting sedimentary rock. Get it out of here. Granite. That's the good stuff right there. Give me that igneous and metamorphic petrology life. That's what I like. Igneous and metamorphic petrology. It's got lava. It's got explosions, it's got metamorphism, it's got chemistry, it's got all the good stuff. Like, sedimentology is for geologists that are afraid they might be biologists, alright? That's all that sedimentology is. It's just, it's just geology for geologists who have lost their way and hung out with the biologist a little bit too long. You know, I'm kind of thinking that we might not have much food around. It might be a good idea, like, I don't know if these guys have been eating or not. Like, I can't harvest those bushes right there, but let's have a look around the map and see if there's any type of, like, harvestable resource around here that we can highlight, because I think we might be getting hungry. I don't know that for a fact. Like, she looks okay on food for right now, but I don't think it would be the worst idea to just keep, like, a weather eye out for, like, berry bushes or anything else that might be helpful. It looks like those are growing at a rate of about 10% per day. We could probably set up a few more little farms over here. So, like, we could do, like, a 4x4 four four right there. We could do, like, a 4x4 four four right there. I don't want these combined. That's not what I wanted. Hmm. Concerning. I think I can just rezone this.
or not. Interesting. We'll have to manually harvest that, I think. That mushroom farm can go because I don't see them doing anything with the mushroom farm. But I wanted smaller farm plots. So we'll have like a 4x4 four four right there. We'll have a 4x4 four four right there. It looks like all the plots need to be spaced out by two tiles. Otherwise, they combine. And then what kind of other seeds did I have? Let's take a look at our resources real fast. And what kind of other seeds did I have available? I had tomatoes. I had carrots. And I had wheat. Okay. Well, let's do one of each then. We'll do some wheat over here. We'll do tomatoes over here. And then we will do carrots right there. I'm just trying to be productive. Oh, they're tearing down all the plants instead of letting them grow. No. No, 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 no. Stop that. Oh, no. So I would prefer it. I guess the farm plot was still there. So why did it swap over to fallow? Maybe it inherits the designation of anything that it's merged with? Oh, weak, dude. I don't like that at all. That's upsetting. Okay. I'm not, like, mad about it, but I am just like, ew, gross. Uh, that was one of those things that I feel like I probably should have known before I did it. But I guess that's the way life goes sometimes. They don't think it be like it is, but it do. I guess I could queue up some doors. So I put in some stone doors. That seems like a particularly dwarfy thing to do. And it looks like we've got doors around right now. They're made out of basalt, because basalt stone is really all we have at the moment. I can designate some of these zones now, too. So we'll have, like, a carpentry workshop right there. And then I would also like to have a metalworks over here. That looks good to me. And then we'll put a sawmill in over here. And then we will put in a masonry, a little Masonic workshop right there. With the Masonic workshop, I'd like to get some furniture for it so we can have a stonemason's workbench inside of here. Can I rotate this? Oh, I can. Nice. Well, let's go ahead and it's not going to fit inside the room in any type of pleasant way, unfortunately. But I'll put it in just to say that I did. And then with the furniture, we can have a carpentry workshop inside of here. Yeah, that seems like an okay deal. Let's put that in right there. And then if I can rotate that around slightly, we can fit another one in, like right there, so that we have two workbenches in that area. With this spot right here, what we can do is we've got a coke oven, we've got a bloomery furnace, so we've got our forge, okay? Stone that contains metallic ore, which can be crushed into metal. So we've got bituminous stuff over here that we can fiddle with, so I'll put that in right there. We've got a bloomery furnace, I guess which is not going to fit very well. And it also does not rotate, apparently. So we're going to need this room to get a little bit larger just so we can fit in all the sundries that go about helping us with our blacksmithing jobs. Because ultimately, what is a dwarf without the ability to blacksmith? We'll swing this down south like so. And then maybe we'll have it go out like that. And then we'll just have like a little door that connects right there. So we'll have like a much larger workspace on that side. From that right there, it's producing four gems. Producing tanzanite uncut gems. Do they just, like, do what they're going to do? I guess they do. It doesn't look like I can queue up jobs right here. I guess they just work on whatever they want to work on. I mean, that's fine. If you want to make gemstones, I don't have a problem with that. Like, make all the gems that your heart desires. Uh, this area is going to be our storage area up here. Yeah, you start carving some stone for me, would you? And then we'll call this a stockpile up here. There we go. Wait, hold on. What happened right there? How come it didn't stockpile for me? Yeah, we'll go resources. Perfect. So that'll be a resource stockpile. We'll start clearing out some of this ugly stone and getting it moving. These are going to be little dormitories where people live at. I'm waiting for them to be done so that I can have people, like, not sleeping on the open ground anymore. Like, there is something to be said about sleeping on the earth, but I just don't think it's necessary for right now. Everybody's got their own rations. They're doing their own thing. I wonder how come these plots have not been planted yet. It's said that we have access to seeds. Like, we have wheat seeds. So why are those not being put into the slots where they need to go? I'm curious. Like, we accidentally used up all of our corn. That was getting planted. Where's our farmer at? So I can change your profession if we want to. Maybe this is their priority? I don't know. 
Maybe there's just like a lot of movement tasks that need to be taken care of first. Maybe that's what's going wrong here. On the plus side, it looks like we've got some maple logs right there. That's a good wood. Maple's, maple's a solid wood. I'm a little bit worried about food is what I'm a little bit worried about though. Like I'm a tiny bit worried about how good we're gonna, what is that right there? We've got a planer right there. Somebody just left their planer laying around. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I can deal with that later. What I'd really like to see in this game is the ability to convert these walls into like carved etch walls that have sort of like Gallic or they've got sort of, you know, Irish or Scottish looking knotworks running down the side of them or Norse looking knotworks running down the side of them. That'd be kind of cool. Like I always liked that feature in Dwarf Fortress, how you could decorate the walls and like if a decorated wall was there, it like made people happier or whatever. I always thought that was a pretty sweet mechanic. Guys are almost done down there. We've got a little bit more mining left to do, but we're getting there. We're moving along slowly. It does look like we're moving along now. I think I accidentally uninstalled this workbench over here, but that's okay because I wanted everything to kind of look the same anyways. I don't really mind. I'd prefer that everything look kind of uniform, though. It's just because I'm OCD about appearances. Like, with aesthetics, I like things to look like what they're supposed to look like. I don't even know if there's an immigration system in this game yet where we can get new dwarves or anything. We've got the settlers menu right here. Looks like most people are pretty unhappy right now. It's okay because I'm working on that. We've got bedrooms. Let's go ahead and drop that on in. And then we'll put a bedroom over here and a bedroom over here. And as soon as this is done, we'll put another bedroom over here as well. I just want them to have their own little living space. I would like it if they installed flooring that looked unique to each like workshop, sort of like Dungeon Keeper style. I mean, it would be nice to be able to customize it myself though, I suppose, and put in whatever type of wood flooring that I desire. Because like, I'm gonna go with that hardwood flooring. I'm gonna be out here in these streets, you know. Like, I'm down with the hardwood flooring. What's that? We've got Galena, so it's gonna be lead. Okay. Lead is usually a sulfide. Usually. Lead and sulfur love to bond to each other chemically. It's like magnesium and oxygen or iron and oxygen really, really like bonding. They bond a lot. They're like bestest chemical buddies. They just can't help it. I'll probably need another stockpile too, but for now I'm happy with what we've accomplished here today. Our base is coming along, looking pretty good. What are we producing over here? So they're making a barrel. What do I need a barrel for? Is it maybe a furniture for like a resource place? Or maybe it's for holding liquids or something. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and find out. They kind of just produce things all by themselves. So a little bit of like a dwarf fortress aspect of that, I guess, where they will just kind of work freely if you let them do that. Uh, so with this down here, obviously I think we're gonna need beds. I think I'll probably just center these. There we go, that looks good. They're gonna move some of the rocks around with our haulers, but once we get everybody, I don't even know how many settlers we have. So we have seven, I'm gonna need one more bedroom. All right, uh, let's go ahead and we'll get another mining order over here. We'll just kind of go in on another 3x3 three three on that side. Maybe I'll queue up another one over here too, just in case we end up needing it. I don't know when new people are going to start showing up. Looks like it takes pine planks in order to get that done. So we may want to queue up a little bit more wood gathering. It's fall. Can I harvest all these berries? Oh, I can. Now that it's fall, I can harvest berries. Good. Harvest berries. We're going to need those. I don't want to starve to death. Starving to death is lame, bro. It's uber lame. And then we'll set the lumberjack to go down there and start eliminating forests about as soon as possible. Uh, the beds are in. They look nice. I think that's a new bed graphic from the last time I played too. Pretty sure the bed graphic the last time I played was like super simple, but now it actually looks like a real bed. Did that help improve their mood? Car golden armor. Is he happier now? Where is my, where's my car golden armor at? Yeah, slept in a private bedroom, nice. Looks good, we're gonna need some doors though. So I'll add that too. Let's go ahead and we'll get some we'll get some stone doors up inside of here. Yeah, use whatever's available. I don't really mind what you use. Just use whatever. I think we may also need a door right there. We have any other locations that have not had doors added? I think everywhere else has already gotten its door. Our blacksmith shop down here. We're finally ready to expand that. Good, so we'll take that right there. We've got our bloomery furnace now. 
Let's go ahead and add that in on that side. We've got a forge, which is a considerably large area. Uh, we can put that up against the wall right there. That's fine. And then we've got the coke oven's already been done. And then we've got an ore crusher. Alright, we'll put in the ore crusher, I guess, right there. It's fine by me. It looks like we've got a dousing bucket on that side, maybe? I don't know. They're starting to clear out the stone, though. Like, we're starting to have a lot more room around here. So, obviously, they're converting some of this into blocks. So, that's good. And then as we're using up some of that stuff, I think things are going to get a little bit more comfortable around here. So this is King Under the Mountain. This game is very primitive. It's still early on. It's only been in development for about a year after its Kickstarter. But it is coming along nicely, and I'm very excited to see what the final release version of this game is going to be. Because honestly, I'm not a big sci-fi guy. Like, I love RimWorld. It's one of my favorite games of all time. But I do love dwarves more than many, many other aspects of life. So if we could end up with a game like RimWorld, but all about dwarves, I'm about it. That sounds like something that I could definitely sink my teeth into. If you wanted to get this game for yourself, it's on itch.io. It's also got a release coming up on Steam within the next couple months, as I understand it. I will see you all later, and I'll have links for that information down below. If you enjoyed this, make sure you leave a like on it. My name is Flattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie gaming every single day, so you don't have to. This was King Under the Mountain. I'll have something hot and fresh for you tomorrow, straight up off the skillet. Bye, everybody.